Hello, today I want to talk to you about the STOP principle, S-T-O-P. I use this in my Christian counseling practice. And here it goes, S, sin needs to be confessed and repented of. I want you to think about this, that in every circumstance in life, there is something usually that I know that I need to change and I need to um, make different in my life. And Jesus had talked about, judge not, lest you be judged, and the way you judge, you will be judged, and the measure you used will be measured against you. And then he said, why do you pay attention to the speck of sawdust that's in your brother's eye, and pay no attention to this two-by-four, this log that's sticking out of your own eye? And in essence, what he was saying is, first, deal with the log that's in your own eye, and then you'll be able to see clearly to deal with the speck that is in your brother's eye. That's from Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 5. And in there, what Jesus was saying is, I want you to focus on the sin that is there in your life that needs to be dealt with first. No matter what the relationship is, I want you to deal with the sin in your life. So, S is sin. And the Bible talks about confessing and repenting. Confessing means to agree with or to say the same thing. So it's in essence saying, God, I agree with you that what I just did in the way I thought, in the way I spoke, or the way I acted was sinful. It was wrong. It was not honoring of you. It was not helpful to me. It was not helpful to my brothers or sisters. And that's sin. So it needs to be confessed and agreed upon. But then this second element is that we need to repent. Repent means to change a mind. Uh, Metanoia. It means to go a different direction. It means to change the way we think. And ultimately, that changes the will and the actions. So S is sin needs to be confessed and repented of. Then the T means to think biblically or think gospel-saturated. I want you to think about the gospel in every circumstance that you come into. I want you to think about the fact that you are a great sinner and Christ is a great Savior. I want you to think about the fact that in the gospel that God has forgiven you all of your sin. That he has brought you together as being righteous in his sight. He has poured grace upon grace upon you so that when you're in situations with other people, can you not do the same thing? That if God can be gracious to you, a great sinner, why can't you be gracious to another sinner? So to think gospel means to remind yourself that I'm not condemned. To remind yourself that I'm not separated from God's love. To remind yourself that you're adopted, that we are adopted into the family of God. To remind ourselves that we are being made new by the Holy Spirit. To remind yourself of the love and the mercy and the compassion and the kindness and the faithfulness of God. So now when you're reminding yourself of those things and thinking about those things, that will help you to deal with the circumstance. So to stop the spiral, we start by recognizing sin in the way we think, speak, or act, and you need to confess and repent of it. T means you need to think biblically, think gospel-saturated thoughts. And then O. O is to obey, regardless of how you feel. Obey is hard. You know, obey means I'm going to do the thing that God commands me to do, regardless of the circumstance, regardless of the way I feel. And, and scripture talks about the fact that partial obedience is inevitably disobedience. That God says, here's where I want you to go, walk in it. We'll do it. In my family, we used to have this phrase and we had said this, that obey right away, all the way, with a good attitude every day. So obey right away. It needs to be immediate. All the way. You can't just do it partially obey right away, all the way, with a good attitude. It can't just be external adherence to the law or to the standard, but internally, fine, I'll do it. And it's like, you know, that kind of attitude that you'll do the activity, but internally, it's like, I am not really happy about this. That's not obedience. That God says, I want you to obey right away, all the way, with a good attitude, and then you need to do it every day. So S is sin that needs to be acknowledged and confessed and repented of. T is to think gospel-saturated thoughts, think biblically. O is to obey regardless of the way you feel. And the last one is this, important, very important, is three words I want you to think about. Prayer, praise, people. I couldn't come up with one. Prayer is so important that God calls us to, to be in the word and to pray. It shows our dependency upon him. It shows that we need him and we turn to him in prayer, which is so important in the midst of your struggles. But then praise is also important. 
Paul talks about that in Philippians chapter 4 as well. He says, you offer your prayer with thanksgiving. There should be gratitude. We we've live at a, such a deficit sometimes in our minds that we desperately need these things in order to be happy. And we should actually refocus our thinking on the things that we have in God and in others and in life that we absolutely do not deserve. So prayer, praise, and then finally people. The reason why we have a problem stopping the spirals in our lives is that we get so caught up in ourselves and less caught up in God and others. And what we need to do is actually do the opposite. We need to get so focused on God vertically and then think about others more than we think about ourselves. And, and Jesus had said that inevitably in that chief commandment. He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength, and to love others as you love yourself, as you give yourself priority, time after time, you need to be reprioritizing your life to honor God and to love others. So I pray that that will help you stop. <laughs> Blessings. Take care.